The COVID-19 vaccine is on the way. Can your employer force you to take it? San Diego County starts to fall behind on contact tracing and an update on ICU capacity. The latest COVID-19 statistics show how bad it is based on zip code and this red wave map. Could the COVID-19 vaccine really cause infertility in women? The Verify team investigates the online claims. Surf's up here at Wind and Sea, and it's not just the surfers getting in on the action. Even during a pandemic, tradition is tradition. What it took in 2020 to be named? Mr. San Diego. News 8 starts right now. We begin with breaking news. A standoff has ended near FBI headquarters in Sorrento Valley. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. And I'm Marcella Lee. San Diego police say this all began with reports of a man with a gun in the area who was said to be possibly suicidal. Traffic lanes are shut down in the 10,300 block of Vista Sorrento Parkway. They have been shut down since late this afternoon. Police say the unidentified man was in custody a short time ago. No other details have been released. Local COVID-19 cases continue to rise, but vaccinations are on the way. Medical workers and first responders will be among the first to receive the vaccine when it arrives. But when it comes to the rest of the general public, many are divided over whether they will get it. As News 8's Steve Price reports tonight, it's also raised questions of whether employers will be able to require their employees to receive the vaccine. COVID-19 vaccinations are on their way with shipments set to be delivered as soon as next week. A lot of people are very excited about that, but others are not, which leads to the question, can your work require you to get it? When we posed that question on our CBS 8 Facebook page, we quickly got hundreds of posts from people passionate on both sides of the issue. Required? No way. They don't even know the long-term effects of the virus, much less the vaccine. I will decline. Absolutely, employers who don't require it should be held liable if any employees or their families get sick. They have been able to mandate vaccinations historically. So Aaron Olson, an attorney specializing in employment and labor law, says at this moment there is no specific law that directly addresses whether employers can require their employees to get a COVID-19 vaccination. But based on previous pandemics, it appears one is coming, especially for those in high risk jobs like health care. Court of Appeal already dealt with an issue where a health care system mandated their employees get the rubella vaccination. And that was challenged and the court said, no, that was proper in that context because of the direct threat imposed in that specific environment. Aaron says all employers have a duty to create a healthy and safe workplace, but if they're going to require the vaccine, they are also obligated to consider accommodation requests from employees with known disabilities that prevent them from getting a vaccination. Religious beliefs could be another exemption, but getting one is not as easy as just saying you have one. It can't be like an employee coming in and saying, oh, my religion is, is I don't want to take vaccines, right? That, that, I'm an anti-vaxxer. That, that's not going to work. It's not going to cut it. So what happens if your work forces you to get the vaccine and you have a reaction that makes you so sick you have to miss work for an extended amount of time? Aaron says you definitely have an argument for a workplace injury and should be entitled to money through workers' comp. Steve Price, News 8. To stay up to date on the vaccine and when it will be available here, just text the word vaccine to 858-571-8888. And you will get a link to all of our latest stories. For the third time in a week, the county is reporting more than 2,000 new coronavirus cases. Today's total is 2,104. With the overall total now more than 97,000, county leaders expect it will surpass 100,000 by the end of the week. About 8% of more than 25,000 tests reported today were positive. There are also 36 new hospitalizations, four more ICU patients, and 15 new deaths reported crossing the 1100 mark. ICU bed capacity continues to decline here in the Southern California region. We are now down to just 9% of ICU beds available. That number is about double for San Diego. Tonight, News 8's Brandon Lewis takes us beyond the numbers to explain how this is different from previous spikes of flu cases. 
Marcella and Barbara Lee, the goal from San Diego County is to preserve ICU numbers. We've already seen some hospitals transfer patients to others within their system. They want to make sure there is space whenever any San Diegan or others within our region need it. While we can operate at 85, 90, 95 percent capacity for the short term, we can't do that for an extended period of time. The county and hospitals continue to treat record numbers of coronavirus patients. Hospitalization set a record for the 16th consecutive day, while ICUs finally decreased after eight straight days of record numbers. Uh, we are doing what we can to uh, ensure that we can take care of every patient that walks through our doors, but we need your help. Our case rate is on track to go into the upper 40s next week, far above the limits of the red tier with no sign of letting up. While we've seen these numbers during severe flu spikes, the system isn't designed to handle it for more than a few weeks. But we cannot sustain months on end of uh, what we're seeing currently. In previous years, it was influenza. Mm -hmm. And when a staff member uh, got influenza with taking the uh, influenza vaccine and with Tamiflu and other therapies, they were able to go back to work a week later or less. Now with COVID, and a healthcare worker yet, contracts COVID, it could last uh, at least 14 days, if not longer. The surge of cases is slowing down contact tracing. Less than half of them were investigated within 24 hours. The county's goal is 90%. Tracers are also getting bogged down, asking more questions than ever before to try and figure out everywhere that a person went. We've maintained uh, between 56 and 27 percent, and with uh, bringing on additional uh, staff, we hope to get back up uh, above the 70 percent, which is our uh, triggers uh, target. We're going to remain under the stay at home order for at least two more weeks. At that point, the state will review things, and if it looks good into January, they'll consider lifting it, but they say we should consider that we may be under the stay at home order for several more weeks to come. Marcella and Barbara Lee. All right, Brian, and thank you. A stark warning from the White House Coronavirus Task Force. It says the pandemic is now spreading faster and farther than ever. News 8's Alicia Summers has more on that and local COVID statistics based on zip code. The latest statistics show over the last nine months, 15 million people have contracted COVID in the U.S. We're now averaging more than 200,000 cases a day for the first time, and hospitalizations are increasing as well. This map from the White House shows the areas in red are where COVID-19 hospitalizations have surged. There are now a record 101,000 patients currently being treated for COVID across the country and admissions rising in 31 states since last month. The report shows that 37 states were in varying red zones for hospital admissions last week. It ranks each state, one being the worst, 51 being the best. California falls near the middle at 27. The majority of counties across the country are seeing between 2.1 to 9.9 .9 fatalities per 100,000. San Diego County lists the number of COVID cases in each zip code. Chula Vista zip code 91911 tops the number of cases at 4,575. The San Clemente zip code of 92672 has the least amount of COVID cases at only one. The county also has a week-by-week -week COVID-19 case rate chart by zip code. Some startling statistics here. Del Mar's seven-day average case rate jumped five-fold from 3.2 cases a week ago to now an average of 16 cases in seven days. As for ICUs in San Diego County, capacity is at 80%. Barbara Lee and Marcella. All right, Alicia, thanks. A local couple who took part in Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine trial is now sharing their story, hoping it encourages others to get vaccinated. Eric Castillo and his wife signed up to volunteer after seeing a story on our error. He says the vaccine hurts just like any other vaccine does when it gets injected, followed by some soreness. And he adds it wasn't until after the second dose that he and his wife both got a fever and bone chills. I, I ended up calling the study and I, and I told them, I said, hey, you know, I, I have some symptoms. He said, yeah, we seem to, some people are getting those symptoms. So there's nothing really to worry about. Despite the side effects, Castillo believes the vaccine is totally worth it for its benefits.
A disastrous ending for the test flight of the SpaceX Starship today. Nobody was on board the rocket ship when it exploded while landing after its six and a half minute test in Texas. This was the most elaborate test so far for the bullet shaped Starship that Elon Musk says could carry people to Mars in as little as six years. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are at odds today over a COVID relief bill as the White House proposes its own nearly $1 billion plan. This comes as President-elect Joe Biden introduces his historic pick for defense secretary. Natalie Brand reports tonight from Washington. Good afternoon. President-elect Joe Biden took the stage with his nominee for defense secretary, retired four-star Army General Lloyd Austin. If confirmed, he would become the first black man to lead the Pentagon. I know this man. I know his respect for our Constitution. I know his respect for our system of government. You can expect that as Secretary of Defense that I will give you the same direct and unvarnished counsel. But General Austin, who retired from active service four years ago, will need a congressional waiver to exempt him from a federal law requiring defense secretaries to be out of uniform for seven years. While congressional Democrats have praised the historic nature of the nomination, some are expressing concern about passing another waiver, having done so for President Trump's former defense secretary, James Mattis. I believe in the importance of civilian control of the military. So does the secretary-designee, Austin. President-elect Biden is counting on his defense secretary to oversee the military and help with distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Mr. Biden has vowed to give out 100 million doses in his first 100 days in office. Wednesday afternoon, the president-elect's son, Hunter Biden, revealed he's learned federal prosecutors in Delaware are investigating his taxes. The Associated Press reports subpoenas were served Tuesday and says the Justice Department's investigation centers on potential tax fraud crimes and had been going on at least a year before the president-elect announced his candidacy. In a statement, Hunter Biden said he takes the matter seriously, but is confident he's handled his affairs legally and appropriately. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. President-elect Biden released a statement this evening saying he is, quote, deeply proud of his son who has fought through difficult challenges, including the vicious personal attacks of recent months. A local civil rights leader was honored by San Diego City Council members today. City leaders declared today civility pledge today after an initiative started by local activist Shane Harris of the People's Alliance for Justice. This is the time uh, to bring back that core message of civility and to promote what it really means to be a civil America. The group started the initiative as a way to bring people together in the face of uncertainty and tension surrounding the results of the election. Today, the city honored the group's initiative and called on San Diegans to take the Pledge of Civility. Well, still ahead tonight, states and the federal government go after Facebook with two lawsuits. Plus, the Christmas tree business is booming, but that may not necessarily be a good thing. We had a lot of 80s yesterday and some record temperatures. We actually broke the record. Oceanside Harbor tied the record for Chula Vista. We were cooler today, even cooler over the next couple of days. Details ahead. But first, at least two people are unaccounted for tonight after a power plant set for demolition collapses.